What's going on everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to be reviewing my top 10 list for new comic book day, July 20th, 2022. I picked up 11 total issues this week so you know what that means. One of them did not make this week's top 10 list and honestly overall it's a very solid week but this list should have been bigger. My shop got shorted on so many books this week. Marvel, DC had shortages. Hell, even from Boom Studios, Grimm issue number 3, they didn't get any cover A's, only the variant covers. Alice Ever After issue number 4 never even showed up in the boxes and same with the Scout comic books. I think they got shorted on Aftershocks as well. Hopefully it's just a small delay. They were missing a couple boxes. Hopefully they get it a little bit later in the week. I can grab those books. But like I said earlier, I'm excited to talk about these books with you guys. So let's jump right into it. All right, everyone, I hope you're all having a fantastic day and you're able to get all of your new comic book day issues on time. Real quick, before I get started off on all of these new books, if you are new to the channel, I drop weekly comic book content that's going to keep you up to date on all of the latest releases. So if you want to miss out on any of that, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell to get notified every time I drop new videos, you won't regret it. And in addition to that, some people have been asking me about it. I did activate my YouTube membership program. It's just going to consist of one tier level, and the main perk with it is that I'm going to be uploading daily YouTube shorts consistent of all different types of comic book content. If you have any questions about that at all, please feel free to reach out, whether it's down below in the comments section. The link is listed down there as well. Or if it's over Instagram, DMs, or just email, I would love to talk about it and discuss it a little bit more in depth with you if you have questions. So this book, this is the one that did not make this week's top 10 list, so I'm not going to be getting too in depth with it. But we've got coming in this week, this is Marvel's Spider-Gwen, Gwenverse, issue number four. This is cover A. Honestly, the best thing about this series has just been the covers. I'm not really interested in it. I don't think it's all that good the artwork is okay as well four issues if you read the first three you basically read this one as well we still have all the different Gwens they're basically trying to save the spider-verse the multiverses and we get introduced to another Gwen character in this one as well it's Captain Marvel I'm not going to be getting too in-depth with it like I said before because it's basically the exact same thing this one, however, was a little bit better than the other ones. It did progress the story a little bit more, and we just got a little bit more insight as to what's going on in the background. So for that, this one didn't make the top 10 list, and now let's jump into the real list. And here we go, everyone. Kicking this top 10 list off first, we've got coming in at number 10. This is Marvel's Venom Lethal Protector, issue number 4. This is cover A. Honestly, guys, I'm not a big fan of this series either. The artwork is alright, but it was a toss-up between this and the Gwen series to see which one was actually going to make the top 10 list this week. This one pulled away mainly because I feel as though each issue brings something new to the table. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the story, but I do like how every issue feels a little different. If you can recall from the last issue, we found out that Eddie, Venom, they have a bounty on their head. We don't know who put the bounty on them, but this issue picks up where that one left off. We've got Eddie and Venom. They're on the news. They're trying to just cl not clear their name, but just say, hey, whoever's got a bounty on our heads, we're going to be at the Yankee Stadium. Come meet us. Let's just have this big showdown. Thought that was cool. That led to a ton of action. We got to see some different characters. So other than that, there was a little bit of other story as well, but I'm not going to spoil everything for you. And I like the little cliffhanger that we got left on too. I am going to finish this one out. I want to see how it ends. But like I said, not a big fan of the series. I would love to talk about it more with you down below. But for those reasons, we've got Venom Lethal Protector issue number four coming in at number 10. Next up this week, we've got coming in at number 9, this is Images, Skybound Presents, After School, issue number 2, this is cover A. This was kind of a last second pickup, and honestly, if my other books would have showed up at the shop, I probably wouldn't have picked this one up, and I kind of wish I didn't. The artwork is alright, it's the same artwork from the first issue, it has a $4.99 price tag on it, and honestly, for a horror anthology series, I just expect a little bit more. A little bit about this story, without too many spoilers, we have a girl, she comes back from, I guess, a summer camp, she finds out she's going to be having a baby, she's scared to tell her friends, she's scared to tell her family, and she doesn't really know what to do about it. But the story takes a weird turn and she gets marked by a stork. And from the rest of the issue, then she's basically being chased and attacked by this crazy killer deranged stork. I don't know, not a big fan of the issue. I thought it was just all right. I'm gonna see what the third one's about, and we're gonna go from there. Let's talk about this one more down below. But for those reasons, we've got after school issue number two coming in at number nine. And next up on my list this week, we've got Dynamite's new one. We've got Mad Balls vs. Garbage Pail Kids, issue number one. This is cover A. This was such a fun issue. I really enjoyed it. If you're not a fan of Mad Balls or the Garbage Pail Kids, you're not going to like this one. The artwork I thought was fantastic, but they really do just hit on nostalgia, and they're really reaching for that type of a fan base. But the issue, it's got two short stories in it. The first one, it's about a family that moves into a neighborhood. Got a nice little house in the center and on the sides. Two kind of condemned crappy houses. One of them is the Garbage Pail Kids. The other one are the Mad Balls. And they're kind of coming together, fighting each other, but saying, hey, we can do all this decorative stuff to your house, even though it's really nice. And they're like, oh, we don't really want any of that. 
They start making some changes, and it's a fun story. The second one is the Mad Balls versus the Garbage Pail Kids, and it's just they're holding a little just event. They host, I think, six or seven type of different fun little games, and by the end of it, well, I'm not going to spoil it, but like I said, if you're not a fan of the Mad Balls or the Garbage Pail Kids, you're probably not going to like this one either, but man, the stories, the artwork, top-notch, big fan of it, plus hits nostalgia. And for those reasons, we've got Mad Balls versus Garbage Pail Kids, issue number one, coming in at number eight. Now we have making a list at number seven this week. This is Images, the Silver Coin, issue number 12. This is cover A. It really pains me to put the Silver Coin so high on my list, but I'm going to be real with you guys. I really didn't think this was all that great of an issue as far as the Silver Coin goes. It was a good story, but I wanted a little bit more from just the Silver Coin and just seeing more of what it can do and what it's capable of. This one is about the war. We've got two sides. I believe it's the Americans versus the Germans. And we've got one guy who's just not willing to kill. He doesn't want to kill anybody. And when he has an opportunity to, someone presents the coin to him. And that's how, you know, the silver coin makes his way into somebody's possession. From there, he kind of makes a little wish saying, you know, I wish I had your skills. I wish I could just kill something like that. And he's like, you know, be careful what you wish for. You're not sure you really want to strip your soul down like that. I'm sure you can put two and two together and guess where the silver coin leads there. We did have a little bit of a plot twist, so that was cool as well. But man, as far as the silver coin issue goes, I really just wanted more out of it. But hey, they can't all be perfect. Still a good story. We've got coming in at number seven this week, the silver coin issue number 12. Next up on my list this week, everyone, we've got coming in at number six. This is Marvel's Miles and Morales Spider-Man issue number 40. This is cover A, another fantastic issue to an incredibly well done arc. I am loving this arc so far. The artwork, the storytelling, the whole plot, everything has been building up and building up. Every issue felt new and fresh and I really enjoyed what they were doing with it. This issue, not a lot of plot, obviously, because if you can recall from the last issue, they found their Uncle Aaron, and they realized that he's attached to this machine that's powering the entire empire, the entire force field. They've come to the realization that they need to detach him to basically save everybody. So that's kind of where this issue is, a ton of action, but we get left on a nice cliffhanger as well. I feel like with this new arc, there's just so much more happening than I would expect to happen. A lot of these issues I've always felt, not just with Miles Morales, but Marvel in general, just, you know, there's going to be a lot of plot or there's going to be a lot of action. That's kind of what they focus on in a lot of these issues. But this one had a little bit of both, a lot more action focused, but still such a well done arc so far. Big fan of this issue. And for those reasons, we've got Miles Morales Spider-Man issue number 40 coming in at number six. And now we're down to our top five issues of the week, folks. We've got coming in at number five this week. This is DC's Black Adam issue number two. This is cover A. I'm not going to be getting too in-depth with this review because I really don't know a lot about these characters, but I really enjoyed the artwork, and I'm going to be real with you. As I was reading this issue, I honestly was Googling who these people were. Like, I was Googling who Black Adam is, who Shazam is, never seen the movie, never read anything else with any of these characters, how they got their powers, who they got their powers from, and even what their powers are, just all of that stuff. I was Googling it. Every time I had a question or I just thought about something, I was like, all right, I'm going to take this to Google. And it just made the issue a lot better for me. So I feel as though if you are a Black Adam fan, Shazam fan, you're probably really enjoying this one because me as someone who doesn't know anything, I'm enjoying it as well. I'm definitely going to keep on with this series, but if you have a lot more knowledge of these characters, which I'm sure you do because it doesn't take much at this point for me, let's talk about more down below, shed some light on some stuff, and maybe it'll make it even better. So for those reasons, we've got coming in at number five this week, Black Adam issue number two. Now we have coming in at number four, this is Aftershocks, Bunny Mask, The Hollow Inside, issue number three, this is cover A. This is another really cool issue. I love this new volume. I think it's so well done. I love the hollow character. As I began reading this issue, if you can recall from what B was saying, like, man, I need a drink. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I feel confused. You need to be a little bit more clear. I felt the same way. I was reading it like, man, what, what the hell is the Bunny Mask character talking about? What is going on right now? And then she made things a little bit kind of more clear. I really like just all the spoilers that they kind of revealed in this one. But then we've got our other group of characters. The Hollow made another appearance. I think this issue is the one where the Hollow did a lot more and even did a little bit more talking as well. I'm so excited to see what they do with this series. I love this volume. If you haven't read the first volume of Buddy Mask, definitely jump on it and read this one immediately as well because they're doing a killer job with it. No pun intended. But for those reasons, we've got coming in at number four this week. We have Bunny Mask, The Hollow Inside, issue number three. 
Down to our final three. We've got coming in at number three this week. This is AWA's The Joneses. Issue number four. This is cover A. Another great issue. Another fantastic series. You need to hop on The Joneses. You need to hop on all the Resistance, the Reborn stuff. AWA is doing a phenomenal job with it. So with this issue, picks up where the last one left off. If you can recall, we've got our two families. They're not really seeing eye to eye on some things. We have The Joneses. They're trying to do well. At least most of the family is trying to be just good superheroes. While the other family, the little neighborhood watch leader they're doing bad things and they just want to make everyone know that hey we are the reborns you actually should be fearing us we shouldn't be fearing you and that's kind of what this whole issue is a lot of other really crazy stuff happens as well but that's kind of just the gist of it they're fighting and they're not seeing eye to eye on anything we did get left on a nice cliffhanger as well definitely read the series only if you are caught up to date on all the resistance stuff not other reborns not the tie-in series just the resistance resistance uprising Get yourself some base knowledge on just the Reborns before you hop into the tie-in stuff. If you have questions about it, let's talk about it down below. But for those reasons, we've got coming in at number three this week. We've got the Joneses, issue number four. Next up this week, we've got coming in at number two. This is Boom Studios' Grim, issue number three. This is the Frizzin variant. This is such a fun series. I wasn't 100% sold after the second one because I kind of wish they would have continued on with how the first issue ended. But after the second issue, it really progressed where we are in the third one. It made the story make a lot more sense. We're getting introduced to a ton of different characters. This issue in particular, there are a ton of different things happening. Death made an appearance. The end, that was kind of that big monster from the second issue. Adira is up to no good. But our main character, Jessica, she's still trying to figure everything out. But as she's trying to figure everything out, the end is chasing her, her whole group. Tons of action, not a ton of plot progression as far as the story goes. But overall, another very well done issue. Definitely check out this series. However, don't be spending those eBay prices. Just wait it out for a little bit. While the series is really good, it's not going to be the next something is killing the children or just the next big thing. I'll eat those words if I'm wrong eventually, but... Just wait it out a little bit. I'm sure the market will fix itself in the next couple of weeks. And for those reasons, we've got coming in at number two this week. We've got Boom Studios Grim issue number three. And here we go, everyone. This is it. My top read of the week. We've got coming in at number one this week. This is Images Ice Cream Man issue number 31. This is cover B. This was another phenomenal issue. I don't know where they decide to take the turn on Ice Cream Man from having this monster killing people to just here's the moral of the story type of series. But every single one of these issues feels like it's just hitting home. It feels relatable. It's sad. And at the same time, it's like, man, that's crazy. But this one as well, they do have some little Easter eggs as far as the Ice Cream Man series goes. I really like kind of a little bit of a spoiler, but they had the man falling off the building. That was a whole episode of its own. They brought in, I think they said it was the Eptimologist from a few issues back too. I like the small little things they're doing, but man, these stories are so well written. I don't want to spoil everything, but the way this one is set up, it's a father and a daughter. And the first half of the story is from the father's perspective. And once we hit the middle, it goes to the daughter's perspective. And just, man, it's talking about time. It's incredible. Pick it up. Read it. Even those little things I just talked about before, little Easter eggs, doesn't affect the story. You don't really need to know that. If you're a fan of Ice Cream Man, you want to get into it, you can pick this one up. Start right here. And for those reasons, we absolutely have taken the crown this week. Coming in at number one, Ice Cream Man, issue number 31. So I don't know about all of you, but this was another fantastic week of new comics. The indies, as always, are killing it. They stay killing it. Ice Cream Man issue number 31, absolutely taking the crown this week. Such a phenomenal read, and I just love the entirety of the story. The artwork is great, but man, every time the issue ends and you just... You feel it right here. That's how you know that is a top-notch written story. Other than that, Grimm was great and some of the other ones as well. But I want to hear which ones were your top reads of the week. Which ones did I miss out on? Let's talk about it more down below. And thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to miss out on any of my upcoming content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. And the little bell to get notified. Every time I drop new videos, you won't regret it. And I've got two more sitting off to the side here with more of my comic book content. Click on one of those and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.